team rivalry reaction. All righty. How's it going, Big Ten football fans? It's Mackenzie with uh, Team Rivalry here with a uh, another video, and, and this time I wanted to examine the recruiting classes excuse me, between the SEC and the Big Ten. So I wanted to look at and compare and contrast the SEC recruiting classes compared to the Big Ten. Now, you can probably already say, what does it matter? Uh, the SEC has much better classes than the Big Ten. And uh, judging by the first two entries here on 247 Sports' 2023 recruiting football team rankings, yeah, I mean, I get it. You're right. And then Texas is joining the SEC next year, which just makes this unfair. Oh, and there's Oklahoma, too. <laughs> wow. So... <sighs> well, and then there's LSU and then Tennessee. So, yeah, I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six out of the top 10 classes are SEC. That being said, the Big Ten has Ohio State, which, I mean, that's kind of back and forth. You, they've got, you know, obviously a good class, but Michigan's beaten them twice in a row. So, maybe <laughs> – Sorry, Ohio State. Ohio State still got a good class, but that just means that their talent might not matter, which might, in fact, render this entire video useless if talent, you know, can be overshadowed by culture, which Michigan's got a good culture. Although this might leave something to be desired, which we've talked about Michigan's recruiting class, but obviously it's still not the best that. Michigan has had and honestly we probably expected it to be better considering they have back-to-back -back CFP runs so we'll get into this a little bit here uh, but really all I wanted to do was kind of compare and contrast what the classes look like between the uh, SEC and the Big Ten so I'm kind of coming at this from the perspective of you know I'm a Big Ten football fan what does the SEC look like are they really that much more powerful and so Keeping in mind, when we look at this list, Ohio State has the number one class in the Big Ten with an overall recruiting point, I, this thing, overall recruiting points, not sure how they, I, I think it's, well, no, see, it's a 94 average and then 327 points, so if you add up all of these, that definitely doesn't equal the 327 here, so I have really no idea um, what this means. But in any case, we'll, we can take another a closer look at that later. But <clears throat> that being said, these points here, which I should probably learn what that means, uh, Ohio State has 288.99 points, which means they would be do, 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 third place in the SEC and not by much. Uh, <laughs> so they would be third place in the SEC and it would be very close between LSU and Ohio State. And that being said, the only reason LSU is as close as they are is uh, because they've got double the five stars. And then Ohio State has 18 four stars to LSU 16 four stars. And I didn't write down how many three stars. So we can look at that in a second. But let's, let's start with Alabama here because they're clearly the cream of the crop. Which is interesting because Alabama hasn't gone to the CFP in a year at this point. So, and last year they went to the national championship, but they still kind of had a weird year, I think. I mean, didn't they lost to, they beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, I want to say, but I don't think they went undefeated outside of that. I can't remember exactly, but that's why I'm a Big Ten commentator, not an SEC. But we're learning about the SEC today. This is, this is what we're going to do. So looking at this right here, we can see the highest rated recruits for Alabama uh, are as follows. We've got Keon Keeley, who's an edge rusher, 6'5", 242. Oh boy. Man, a 99, almost a 100 overall kind of a situation. See, these are the guys you go for on NCAA 14. This is, that's insane. These are talented kids. That's crazy. That's that's really that's way up there. Okay, so then Keon Keeley being a, a massive edge rusher, so he's really going to be an uh, a, a a force to be reckoned with on that defense. So that'll be interesting. Actually, let's just go into their class as a whole because I'm interested to see 
So composite rank number one, transfer rank, they're not bringing in transfers. They brought in one from Georgia and one from Ella, or from Maryland. That's very interesting, but okay. So, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I don't really understand that, but okay. <clears throat> Let's just see what we're working with here. So Caleb Downs, he's a five-star. Caden Proctor, he's a five-star. Uh, offensive tackle, we got a running back, Justice Hayes. He's a – Haynes, sorry. He is also a five-star. Desmond Ricks, a cornerback, he is also a five-star. James Smith, defensive line, also a five-star. Almost a 100 overall or a 99 overall. Goodness gracious. So, okay, already what I'm seeing right off the bat here is – Alabama has an extremely good incoming class. Obviously, they're number one in the country. But specifically what I'm looking at here is the fact that they have the number one composite ranking from high school or from the high school class. So they're doing they're heavily emphasizing high school recruiting over transfer rank recruiting, which is interesting if you contrast that to like a Michigan who let's see if I can there's an open link in a new tab. And let's go to football recruiting home real quick. Uh, team rankings. We'll head down to Michigan. So like a Michigan. Oh, that's 2024. Come on. Uh, 2023. So if you look at Michigan, Michigan's transfer rank is 14. Now their composite rank isn't bad. I mean, it's still top 20. So that's good. But the transfer rank is 14. So you compare that with Alabama, whose transfer rank is 59. If we were just going off of transfers, Alabama's class would be one of the worst in the Big Ten, I believe. I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Which is interesting to kind of think trend-wise. So are we, especially in the age of NIL, which I understand Michigan's NIL is, is a bit of a head-scratcher. I, I think I see what they're trying to do in terms of NIL, where they're not going to offer high school students outright, but... They'll allow the high school students to prove themselves, and then you come to Michigan, and you you that's where you prove yourself, or maybe you prove yourself elsewhere, and then they offer you. They want to see the work done before they just hand you the NIL package, which honestly I think is a better way to do it just from a uh, uh, future standpoint. I mean, you're setting the kids up for more success if they know that they got to work for that money rather than just handing it to them. Um, not to say that the kids who get the money handed to them in order, you know, as like a transfer incentive don't deserve it. I'm not saying that at all because, you know, everyone is an individual. Everyone, you know, everyone is themselves. They, they either deserve it or they don't. I'm getting warm. I'm going to open the window a second. But that being said, it's definitely better to reward work and effort and success than it is to just make a, at, at least from a business standpoint, lay down millions of dollars in NIL funding on a kid who could be hit or miss, especially if you're recruiting them out of high school. Because let's be honest, a lot of good recruits out of high school sometimes bust. And it just doesn't make business sense to hand those kids millions of dollars without any sort of proven, uh, proven record. So I can see what Alabama's doing here is focusing on recruiting out of high school. Now, I don't know what, I don't know a lot about Alabama's NIL, NIL philosophy. I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Nick Saban doesn't like it. I think he does not like NIL whatsoever, but I mean, I got to believe they're doing something. Otherwise they wouldn't be bringing in a class this ridiculous. I mean, this is, this is a good class. Okay. So talked about Alabama. Let's see what else we've got. We got Georgia at number two in the SEC, number two overall as well. Transfer rank 40, so much better than Alabama. Let's just take a look at those transfers real quick. So transfers all from all from the SEC. And we've got we've got a cornerback, a wide receiver, and another wide receiver. So Smoke Bowie, nice name. Ra Ra Thomas, that's awesome. Dominic Lovett, boom. These are some strong names right here. That's that's awesome. So Interesting, interesting set of guys here. Uh, Georgia's definitely an offense uh, built, I think. I think, from what I've seen, they like to pass the ball, I think. So you've got a couple of wide receivers coming in. As transfers, they're coming in with uh, higher scores than they came out of high school with. So this is what I'm saying in terms of, like, 
Michigan would be going after guys in the transfer portal to kind of fill out the roster a little bit, and these would be the types of guys that they would go after. Now, I don't, I don't know if Michigan tried recruiting these guys. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, compare and contrast Georgia's, uh, Georgia and Alabama's strategy of recruiting against most of the Big Ten, honestly. I think a lot of the Big Ten is trying to go more transfer heavy, um, and it's, it's interesting to see development programs versus um, – I don't even know what to call. So if like if <laughs> if you've got Alabama and Georgia developing the high school students into and into college football players or at least from college or trying to get them prepared for NFL kind of stuff, then what do you call a Michigan and Ohio State? Although Ohio State's transfer class is not great, I don't think. So what would you call like a Michigan who's maybe um, benefiting disproportionately well from the transfer porter transfer portal as compared to other big 10 teams, meaning that Michigan is Michigan is benefiting from the transfer portal a lot more than other big 10 teams. So let's see. Yeah. They're number, they're number 14, but in terms of the big 10, ah, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's check out LSU real quick here. Okay. Ooh, transfer rank number two. Okay, so, interesting. Brian Kelly coming into his second season. Obviously, the first season was pretty successful. They took down Alabama. I want to see who he's bringing in. So he's got a four-star Omar Spates, four-star linebacker from Oregon State, Ovia Gofu. I think that's how you pronounce that. Apologies if that's wildly wrong. Uh, Edge rusher, he got a little bit better as well. He's from Texas. J.K. Johnson, a quarterback from corner back rather from Ohio State that's big that that really sucks for Ohio State Deuce Chestnut cornerback he gained a star he's from Syracuse Zia Alexander he's a cornerback he's from what is that southeastern Louisiana nice Jordan Jefferson he gained a star defensive line from West Virginia I shouldn't go through all of these but I hate to not shout out everybody here if I'm going to shout out some of them better shout out all of them we got Denver Harris, Jalen Lee, Paris Shand, Braden Swinson, Aaron Anderson. So lots of lots of good players transferring in. You got a bunch of threes and four stars transferring in. That's a good transfer class right there. So then in terms of their high school class, what are we looking at? So composite, yeah, composite rank number six. You've got a five-star edge rusher in Deshaun Womack. Six foot four, two forty, five star, almost a ninety nine overall. That's really good for them. So this is this is really interesting. This is interesting to me because let's think about Brian Kelly's in his second year at LSU, right? So he's building a program right now. Last year he built, or, or last year was his first year, and they had a, a pretty good season, right? This year is interesting because they're, they've got to figure out a way to continue to build off of that. So you see their last year, 2022 class, Brian Kelly's first year, they had a number three transfer ranking. So they went in and they took a bunch of players out of the transfer portal to try and build up a roster that would be immediately effective, right? They're probably trying to do the same thing this year as well, while also uh, heavily, heavily investing in high school recruiting. The problem is... Actually, it's not really a problem as much as uh, or unique to LSU, but this is kind of the problem with the, the modern-day transfer portal is that schools are going to need to continue to recruit their own players and keep them there. And that's probably like what Michigan is doing with their NIL package that I, I think is actually kind of interesting because theoretically – you recruit your players by telling them like, yeah, you come here and you prove yourself, then we'll give you the money. And that keeps the players invested and keeps them on their, on the roster rather than transferring out. That being said, you do have places like LSU that is willing to uh, toss some money in Alabama, Georgia. I'm sure, I'm sure Ohio state, I'm sure a lot of schools do it because you can, it is, it is legal now <laughs> to just go ahead and toss millions of dollars at recruits to build up a, uh, build up a roster. So this is interesting to me. I, I'm not really sure why just yet. Um, clearly they knocked it out of the park in terms of balance between high school recruits and transfer recruits. Um, but the transfer recruits, I, I think are definitely going to be effective this particular season. And that's why they did that. They went heavy in the transfer portal. 
The composite recruits, on the other hand, that's going to be a more developmental thing, and that's going to require some resources to make sure that they stay on campus. And then I have a feeling that you'll probably see as they get into a groove, Brian Kelly gets into a groove with development and stuff like that, that they probably won't utilize the transfer portal as much they might still because you, it's a good way to fill in gaps on the roster if you've got a lack in talent somewhere um but i imagine their transfer ranking will probably go down in the in the coming years let's just real quick see where the other uh uh sec teams are we keep going back here tennessee is at 276 they would be number two in the big 10 uh lsu would be yeah, number two and yeah, LSU, sorry, would be number two in the Big Ten. Tennessee would be number three. And then we've got Florida at two sixty nine. They would be number four. Texas A and M would be five. South Carolina would be six. Auburn would be seven, just barely, and then number eight would be Michigan. And then number nine would be Arkansas. So most of the SEC would outrank Big Ten teams if they were in the Big Ten. Uh, Ohio State and Penn State would be the only two in the top five, I believe. Yes, in the top five. So, actually, in the top seven. Ohio State and Penn State would be the only Big Ten teams in the top seven if the SEC were all Big Ten teams. Or if the if Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan were in the Big or SEC. Whew, running out of breath saying all of these acronyms and stuff like that. So interesting to look at these classes. Um, Kentucky honestly would have a not horrible class as far as the Big Ten is concerned. Little concerned about Missouri being this low, uh, but that's that. In any case, let's switch over to the Big Ten real quick, see what we see just for comparison's sake. So uh, we'll start with Michigan. Obviously, they've got the one four-star, or uh, they've got multiple four-stars, rather, no five-stars. Transfer rank of 14, filling in some gaps and stuff like that. They do have some big pickups, like Drake Nugent. Um, he's a good pickup. They got Miles Hinton. He's a good pickup. Ernest Hausman, he's a good pickup. Honestly, all of these guys are great pickups through the transfer portal. Um, and they're definitely going to fill in some gaps on on the team and be effective you know, pretty much immediately. But that being said, Michigan also returns basically everybody from last year's roster. So Michigan is going to have or should have a really strong year this year. In terms of what they're what they're emphasizing, so just kind of looking at the data here, composite rank 18, transfer 14. So transfer, it's, it's good, it's not great, um, at least compared to what we were just looking at, especially with LSU being number two. That being said, composite ranking is number 18. Now, normally you would say that's not good. And that's surprisingly not good because of the whole CFP run or the back-to-back -back CFP runs, back-to-back -back conference championships and stuff like that. Why is it at number 18? Now, there's some outlying factors considering like Jim Harbaugh's flirtation with the NFL yet again. Is that, you know, maybe not doing Michigan any favors? It probably isn't. Um, what I would say is Michigan probably uh, is going to rely more on the transfer portal than most teams. And it's probably going to be because uh, they have a good NIL package bringing in those kids because they've proven themselves, but also because they can keep what players they have. And so they keep those players for longer. They develop those players into what the system needs and then they just they build their their roster off of that. So it's almost like a situation where talent retention may end up being <laughs> may end up being a stronger method uh, than developing or trying to get as many guys out of the out of high school with NIL packages as you can. You know, so it's it's the difference. It's an interesting philosophical recruiting philosoph. Ugh, excuse me. It's an interesting recruiting philosophical uh, dilemma, looking at talent retention versus scattershot recruiting or high school recruiting. Um, 
if that makes any sense. So basically, you've got the Alabamas of the world who are going into high schools and getting all of the best high school talent, whereas you've got Michigan who's getting you know, some decent talent and stuff like that, but they're developing them. They're keeping them over the course of their four years and stuff like that. Um, and they're churning out strong teams because of it. Now, Alabama's obviously churning out strong teams as well because they have the talent to do so. But what you might find is that Alabama might have a more difficult time keeping their players or at least keeping the ones that aren't starting than a Michigan would. And so from year in, year out, Michigan doesn't need to rebuild as much as Alabama does. Although <laughs> Alabama also doesn't really ever rebuild. They just kind of reload, like they, they always say about Ohio State. So I don't know, just kind of some thoughts there. Real quick, let's look at Ohio State. Try and uh, do a little comparison here. Do, 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 do. All right, so Ohio State. Transfer rank 39. Yeah, so they're not focused as much. They're kind of taking the SEC route on this. They're not focused on the transfer portal as much as they are high school students for development's sake. And that's probably a good way of doing it. That's a great way to lay a foundation and make sure that you're bringing in good talent. But the fact is, is that you want to make sure that you're developing that talent and then also keeping them there. So a, a rather decent uh, transfer class. It's definitely not terrible. I mean, just the, the players that they've got coming in are good. Um they just don't have a lot. And that could mean anything from they didn't emphasize it to they couldn't actually bring in people. Um, my guess is that they probably just didn't emphasize it considering the fact that they're bringing in the number five uh, composite rank uh, high school class. So an interesting, uh, interesting little look here at what Ohio State is doing. And then I just want to see real quick what Penn State is doing. Do, do, do. Uh oh. What are you doing, 247 Sports? Let's see if this will work. Oh, we're on. Okay, let's go Big Ten and Penn State. It's not working now? Really? Well, I can't believe that happened. Maybe we could just type it in real quick, see what happens. Okay, 247 Sports. I wonder if it's just Penn State's is broken or something wild all right well we'll never know what penn state is up to recruiting wise but that's okay moral of the story is um it's going to be interesting seeing how teams emphasize their recruiting whether or not they're going to find a balance between the two uh between transfer and high school students like um like what lsu is doing and or whether or not they're going to emphasize transfer portal over high school recruiting or high school recruiting over transfer portal. And how is NIL going to factor into this? Because there's multiple ways that you can approach. <laughs> there's multiple ways that you can approach multiple different tactics here. So you can take different tactics to approach the different tactics. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but it's really going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much and this kind of made sense and was an interesting little examination at the SEC versus Big Ten. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how terrible my takes are or how bad I uh, don't understand SEC football. That's okay. I'd love to learn. And we'll see you in the next video. Team Rivalry Reaction. Mm -hmm.